All right, tech family, I am not happy. After my initial review of this laptop, the Dell XPS 13 Plus 9320, I decided to keep the i7 model for myself. I really like the form factor, the comfortable keyboard, and of course the design. Plus, the temperatures you feel while using it for non-demanding tasks are warm, but they're acceptable. To be honest, I've really enjoyed using this laptop. I really have. I've enjoyed using it for non-demanding tasks like writing and researching scripts for this YouTube channel. However, soon after I passed the return period, I started hitting some pretty serious issues, and I'm super frustrated at Dell's quality control. So this is my follow-up longish term review of the Dell XPS 13 Plus 9320, and grab some popcorn as I'm about to go full Josh. The main issue I kept hitting with this laptop is regular freezing and massive drops in performance, particularly evident when consuming media. Videos constantly freeze and stutter during playback. Netflix, YouTube, you name it. Look closely at the TV show playing in the background as they try to open hardware info. It's freezing and now frozen. Finally, we get some playback. Now let's try alt tabbing out of a movie. You can see I'm not able to switch to another application. I'm pressing alt tab, alt tab, nothing. And we're back to more stuttering and freezing. You can clearly see that the movie is meant to be playing. I only have an option of pausing. That's because it's supposedly playing right now. By the way, the reason I'm trying to open hardware info is to help diagnose this issue. The laptop felt very warm to the touch during this time, and I was worried about hitting the infamous Intel 400 megahertz throttle issue, which others are reporting on this laptop. I've hit that exact issue before on my old Surface Book 2. What happens is the processor gets so hot that it has to be throttled down to a completely unusable 400 megahertz. But as the processor cools, there is a bug that never allows it to power back up to a usable clock speed. But in this case, you can see that the CPU cores do seem to be running at a reasonable frequency and aren't stuck at 400 megahertz. When we look at CPU usage, it's low. There aren't any offending applications. And here is hardware info's reporting. Also seems fine. Even CPU temperatures are low, but the TV show still won't play. And yes, for those who've noticed, I am watching through CW's trashy arrow for a second time. Once again, the show should be playing. If I do stop and play at a different scene, it's still frozen. And this occurs with YouTube videos too. If you think it's a Chrome issue, think again. Here it is playing on Microsoft's Edge browser. Look how jolty the movement is on screen. Just in case you think my camera is the culprit, here is some movement to show you that that certainly isn't it. So there is clearly something wrong here, like really wrong. And in case I didn't mention, all drivers and software are the absolute latest that Dell and Windows provides. I even tried updating the drivers directly from Intel. But the issues don't stop there. We were in the middle of filming an audio test of this laptop for a review that I'm doing comparing it to the MacBook Air M2. We had the speakers playing full volume and we started hearing popping sounds. Both myself and my assistant could clearly hear it. I'll play it for you, but it may be hard to make out recorded by my mic and then played back via YouTube. So as usual, I researched whether others had similar issues. And no surprises, many owners were reporting these issues across the net, from Reddit to Best Buy's review section, even Dell's own website was riddled with complaints from owners. Common issues included the two I mentioned, plus the 400 megahertz throttle issue that I described earlier. Also, for some, the haptic trackpad stopped working. And another issue that used to happen on my laptop was mentioned. The speakers would occasionally just suddenly stop working, requiring a full restart to come back on. For the lols, check out what happened to one lucky shopper in Best Buy. And by the way, this is mislabeled as the XPS 15, it's actually the 13 Plus 9320. Best Buy have it correctly labeled on the display. That issue hasn't happened to me and no one else I know has reported it. I just thought it was a funny video. Several users did suggest fixes such as turning off turbo on their processor, but you really shouldn't have to do that. These processors are meant to turbo up for short running tasks. And if Dell can't handle the heat of putting such a processor in this laptop, guess what? It shouldn't have been put here in the first place and marketed to you. Oh, and I did try running throttle stop with the limit tab open to see if I could diagnose the issue. I didn't see anything I recognized like BD Pro Shot. 
I was so beyond annoyed that I put out a general warning about buying this laptop. Then one of my Discord server members came up with a suggestion. He suggested a full clean reinstall, not a recovery of Dell's pre-installed Windows, so I gave it a go. Please note, reinstalling Windows this way on this laptop has complexities. You'll need to download the Windows Media Creation Tool. Use it to create a bootable USB drive. Then you must download the zip version of Intel's Rapid Storage Technology Driver and unzip it onto that USB drive. And importantly, it must be the right version of that driver. I'll place a link to the one I used in the description below. Then you need to load that driver during the reinstallation. Otherwise, you won't be able to see the storage drive. After completely deleting all SSD partitions and performing the reinstall, the Wi-Fi wasn't detected. I had to plug the laptop into my router via an Ethernet cable. I used an Anker 1 gigabit USB-C adapter for that, which I'll link below. After Windows updated, the Wi-Fi worked and so did the laptop. I did not download or install any software from Dell, neither their own software or drivers posted on their website. After spending a ton more time testing this laptop, both the video stuttering issue and sound popping issue no longer seems to be occurring. And none of the other issues I mentioned that others had seen like the 400 megahertz issue or the trackpad issue occurred either, which is a relief. By the way, I have done clean reinstalls before on laptops, of course, but normally such basic things such as playing a movie works without one. So now I'm gonna rant. Dell's quality control is seriously flawed. There is no way that this laptop should have been released with the issues that I and many others have experienced. I do not expect a normal user who buys this laptop to go through the effort that I went to for that clean reinstall. And you might be wondering, am I being overly tough on Dell versus other manufacturers? Don't all laptops have issues? Look, I can only report on what I've personally experienced and if and when, I experience issues with other laptops. Guess what? I'll tell you about it. But in my personal experience, no manufacturer has had such a large amount of quality control issues, rudimentary issues should I say, that I've personally experienced with Dell. I literally couldn't consume media on this laptop. And as I said, Dell is renowned for having quality control issues. Remember the infamous XPS 15 loose trackpad issue from several years ago that I and many others hit? Dell, get it together. Anyway, if you are considering buying this laptop, please make sure you're subscribed because if these issues start reoccurring, I'll let you know. Look, to sum up my long-term thoughts on this laptop, I do really enjoy using it. I really do. As I said, I like the form factor. It looks amazing. The keyboard is very comfortable and the trackpad works surprisingly well. It's a very good laptop for casual use and travel with one additional major downside very poor battery life. I normally get around four hours in real world use with my 4K screen model with the brightness down a couple of notches. You'll most likely want to bring a charger with you when you travel. Oh, and it annoys me that the laptop doesn't sit flat on a desk. Perhaps another quality control issue. Look, I'm probably never going to get a review unit from Dell after this video, but someone had to stand up for you, the consumer. Well, I'm done here. If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that like button and get subscribed. Not only does it show your appreciation for the insane amount of effort that goes into making these videos, but as I always say, it makes my mother very proud. If you'd like help picking a laptop or diagnosing an issue, try checking out our Discord channel, link below. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.